The story starts with a peaceful city facing an attack from a monstrous creature known as a kaiju. As the emergency kaiju alert blares, citizens are directed to safety zones. The colossal kaiju wreaks havoc, prompting the arrival of a defense force, which engages it in combat, aiming to stop its rampage. With previous encounters with such threats, onlookers await the response from different divisions of the defense force. The third division swiftly intervenes, deploying powerful weapons against the kaiju. Among them, a girl wielding a large cannon deals a decisive blow, piercing the kaiju and ending its life. After the chaos subsides, the protagonist, Kafka, marvels at the enormity of the defeated monster. Aware of the cleanup ahead, he informs his group that they'll be working overtime. Nearby, citizens applaud the third division for their successful mission without casualty. While the heroes depart, Kafka approaches the fallen kaiju. His duty begins post-battle, tasked with the unglamorous but essential job of dismantling and disposing of the defeated kaijus. Amidst his work, he gathers a sample of the creature for analysis. Although less celebrated than combat, their task is a battle of its own. In the midst of his duties, Kafka notices someone mishandling something hazardous, resulting in an explosion and injuring someone, underscoring the risks involved in their less glamorous, but crucial work. Fortunately, Kafka is experienced in handling injuries like this, so he manages the situation skillfully. The team faces a daunting workload, and Kafka feels frustrated by the boss's expectation to clean up the massive mess within just one week. Suddenly, Kafka receives news that he'll be reassigned due to staffing shortage, and he's taken aback to learn he's headed to the intestine. Reluctantly, Kafka follows, while his colleagues discuss the unpleasant nature of the intestines. Upon arrival, Kafka is repulsed by the sight and smell but resolves to persevere through his discomfort to complete the task. Exhausted, he returns home that night and diligently tries to rid himself of the lingering odor from work. As he settles in, a news report featuring Division 3 and their captain, Nina, airs. At only 27 years old, Nina has not only risen to the rank of captain but also achieved numerous kaiju kills. Flashbacks reveal Nina and Kafka's friendship and their shared promise to eliminate kaiju together, evoking emotions from both. Nina's remarkable popularity and fame lead to discussions about her potential candidacy for commander of the defense force. Kafka finds himself pondering how he ended up in this situation, but the thought brings him down, so he pushes it aside. He reminds himself that cleaning is valuable work that serves a purpose and allows him to enjoy his favorite foods and live in a comfortable apartment. Thinking this should be sufficient, Kafka goes to bed. The next day at work, he meets Ikakawa, a part-time student determined to join the defense force. A colleague remarks that Kafka once shared Ikakawa's aspirations, but eventually gave up, settling into a veteran role at the cleaning company. Curious, Ikakawa asks, why Kafka quit, and Kafka admits he realized his limitations despite his efforts, there's always someone better. While Kafka tries to maintain a positive outlook, Ikikawa remains resolute, declaring he'll never give up, unable to comprehend Kafka's resignation. Unwilling to engage further, Kafka changes for work, feeling frustrated that he couldn't answer Ikikawa without feeling disheartened. Reflecting on his situation, Kafka questions if giving up is truly a negative outcome. As they begin their tasks for the day, they discuss which parts to preserve for research and which to discard. Ikikawa is assigned to work on the intestines, while Kafka grapples with his thoughts about quitting and the differences between himself and the determined newcomer. Kafka appreciates Ikikawa's determination, but he's dismayed to find himself assigned to the intestines for a second consecutive day. Despite this, he resolves to demonstrate his abilities. While the boss acknowledges Kafka's diligent work ethic, he also notes Kafka's tendency to complain, recognizing Kafka's potential as a defense force officer if he had passed the exam. During their work, Kafka notices Ikikawa's lack of food and offers him a vitamin drink, insisting he eat to sustain himself. Though initially resistant, Ikikawa eventually accepts. Kafka also offers nose plugs to help with the smell, which Ikikawa declines but Kafka persists. At the end of the day, as they clean up, Kafka anticipates the most challenging part is over. When Ikikawa unexpectedly thanks him for his support, Kafka assumes he wants a rematch from their earlier wrestling match but is surprised by Ikikawa's gratitude. As Ikikawa leaves, he mentions the Defense Force's increased age limit, observing Kafka's sadness about the topic. Though Ikikawa suggests Kafka can quit if he wishes, Kafka appreciates the sentiment and acknowledges Ikikawa's understanding, realizing Ikikawa is a better person than he initially thought. Ikikawa maintains his tough demeanor, insisting to Kafka that he doesn't care. But their conversation is interrupted when a monster, known as a Yaoju, attacks Ikikawa. Kafka intervenes just in time to save him, but Ikikawa is shaken by the encounter. Kafka urges Ikikawa to flee and seek help, 
emphasizing that his aspiration to join the defense force would be impossible if he were to perish. Despite Kafka's insistence, Ikikawa initially refuses to leave his side. Eventually, however, he complies and runs off as Kafka leads the monster away from him. As Kafka lures the creature through the city streets, narrowly dodging its attacks, he reminisces about his past with Mina, a friend who also suffered losses due to kaiju attacks. While Kafka's primary concern was finishing his Pokémon game, Mina's sadness over the death of her cat, Miko, revealed deeper emotions. Their determination to join the defense force solidified as they witnessed the destruction caused by the kaiju, prompting them to engage in a playful competition to see who could become the most impressive officer, despite their young age and initial doubts about the idea. Kafka's determination to eradicate all kaiju together with Mina feels distant as he finds himself fleeing from the relentless monster, which ruthlessly demolishes buildings in pursuit. Despite his realization that the situation has spiraled out of control, Kafka resolves to confront the creature, focusing on attacking its vulnerable legs. However, his efforts prove futile as the monster swiftly retaliates, leaving Kafka injured and questioning why events unfolded this way. Writhing in agony as the monster's foot crushes his leg, Kafka resigns himself to his fate, only for Ikikawa to arrive in the nick of time to rescue him. Though Kafka initially berates Ikikawa for risking his life, Ikikawa's steadfast loyalty stems from his desire to fulfill his aspiration of joining the Defense Force. Kafka's mind flashes back to his own rejection from the Defense Force, fueling his self-reproach for his perceived inadequacy. As Kafka reflects on his past failure, his frustration mounts, culminating in a scream of rage just as Ikikawa faces imminent peril. Suddenly, the monster is obliterated, shocking Kafka and Ikikawa, as Mina and her team from the 3rd Division arrive to eliminate the threat. While Mina tends to the injured, Kafka is taken aback by her arrival, realizing that his friend from the past has become a formidable leader. With the immediate danger neutralized, Mina directs her team to search for any remaining threats, leaving Kafka to grapple with a mix of relief and introspection. Kafka lies in critical condition, barely responsive, as he receives medical attention. Later, at Yokohama Hospital, he reflects on Mina's remarkable display of prowess in swiftly vanquishing the monstrous threat, realizing that she has ascended to a level beyond his reach. Feeling isolated, Kafka is surprised to find Ikikawa by his side. Ikikawa acknowledges Kafka's pivotal role in saving him and guiding him to safety, emphasizing Kafka's bravery. This unexpected praise prompts Kafka to recall his rivalry with Mina to become the most impressive officer. Despite Ikikawa's belief in Kafka's potential as an officer, Kafka acknowledges that the decision ultimately lies with him. In a moment of clarity, Kafka metaphorically shakes himself awake from his negative thoughts, recognizing the need to confront his self-doubt. Expressing gratitude to Ikikawa, he acknowledges the younger man's kindness and sincerity. Though Kafka still grapples with the idea of giving up, he realizes the danger of self-deception and resolves to confront his fears head-on. With determination, he reaffirms his goal of becoming a Defense Force officer. However, his declaration is abruptly cut short when he is startled by the sudden appearance of a monster looming above him. The creature claims to have found him and forcefully enters Kafka's mouth, leaving him gasping for air and thrashing in distress. Concerned, Ikikawa rushes to check on Kafka, only to be stunned to find a monster in his bed. Despite the shock, Kafka tries to reassure Ikikawa, urging him to stay calm and recognize that it's still him. However, their peace is disrupted by the arrival of an elderly man summoning the Defense Force. Panicked by the implications of the Defense Force's involvement with the Kaiju, both Kafka and Ikikawa fear the consequences. Reflecting on a past conversation with Mina about combating Kaiju, Kafka recalls advising her on how to immobilize the creatures by targeting their legs. Assuring her that he would support her when the time came, Kafka now realizes the weight of his past assurances. Meanwhile, Mina receives word of a kaiju sighting at Yokohama Hospital and immediately resolves to confront the threat. Determined to take action, she mobilizes her team to eliminate the kaiju and protect the city. A warning blares out to alert everyone about the spotted kaiju. Inside the hospital, an elderly man quakes in terror as he faces the monstrous creature. The stress triggers a second heart attack, though judging by his condition, it seems more like his third. Ikikawa, in a stroke of brilliance, attempts to calm the elderly patient by having Kafka smile at him. However, this unexpected gesture causes the man to faint, collapsing onto the floor on the verge of rigor mortis. Concerned, Kafka rushes to check on the old man, but his gentle touch unexpectedly shatters the wall, startling both him and his student. As other patients emerge to investigate the commotion, they catch only a fleeting glimpse of the monster before the defense force arrives. Sensing the impending danger, Kafka and Nikakawa decide to make a hasty escape. 
Kafka bolts towards the window, forgetting his own strength, and inadvertently tears through the wall. Ikikawa manages to leap onto a nearby platform just in time, but Kafka, taking a single step, is launched through the air like a jumbo jet. Meanwhile, the defense force receives word that the kaiju is retreating from the hospital and heading towards an evacuated area. With the kaiju on the move, Kafka and Ikikawa sprint as fast as they can, relying on their own legs to carry them to safety. Ikikawa ponders silently how his mentor could possibly be a kaiju, questioning the feasibility of such a transformation. When he turns to confirm Kafka's identity, his eyes widen in shock at the sight of his teacher morphed into an even more grotesque creature, akin to some kind of special mode. A strange appendage emerges from Kafka's mouth, swiftly snatching a nearby bird and devouring it raw for sustenance, much to Ikikawa's disgust. Surprisingly, the impromptu meal triggers Kafka's reversion to his original kaiju form. As they flee, Kafka suddenly feels the urge to relieve himself, prompting Ikikawa's confusion as to how this is possible without the proper anatomy for urination. To their horror, Kafka expels urine from two spots on his chest, a bizarre lactation of yellow liquid. Distraught and fearing social rejection, Kafka collapses in tears, worried about his prospects for marriage and joining the defense force. Eventually, they reach their destination. Ikikawa assumes that once they enter, the area will be empty due to the evacuation. However, just before they leap over, Kafka senses something approaching. Ikikawa wonders if it's the defense force, but Kafka informs him that the presence is underground. Suddenly, they catch sight of a kaiju emerging. The appearance of the monster alerts the unit on their way to handle the initial sighting. Mina instructs one unit to proceed while she investigates the new location. As they head there, Kafka recognizes the kaiju as the same type that attacked earlier. Ikikawa deduces that fewer reinforcements will be sent to their location, providing them an opportunity to conceal themselves. Despite the evacuation of the area, where the new kaiju appeared, there seems to be a complication. The sound of a girl crying from beneath the rubble. Her mother is trapped, and the girl struggles to lift the debris. Unfortunately, lacking the strength to move it, she is unable to rescue her mother. The mother urges her daughter to flee, but the determined girl insists on trying to save her. As the failed rescue attempt unfolds, the kaiju emerges and targets the girl. However, a powerful punch suddenly strikes the monster, sending it flying. Kafka marvels at his strength and rushes over to check on the girl's well-being. Understandably, she is frightened by the presence of the monster. Kafka tries to reassure her with a smile, but it only adds to her fear. Finally, Ikikawa arrives, and Kafka lifts the slab off the unconscious woman. Assuring the girl that her mother will be fine, Ikikawa advises her to stay calm. Meanwhile, the previously defeated monster returns for another round. Kafka instructs Ikikawa to evacuate the civilians while he prepares to deliver a powerful blow. After charging up his energy, Kafka delivers a punch that obliterates the monster, reminiscent of Saitama's feats. The creature's essence rains down, staining the ground red. Despite his heroic actions, the girl remains fearful of Kafka. As Kafka walks away, the girl expresses her gratitude, triggering memories of Mina's appreciation. Determined not to abandon his goal of joining the defense force and protecting Mina, Kafka's human form partially returns as he vows to fulfill his promise to his childhood friend. When the defense force finally arrives, they find themselves perplexed by the aftermath of the event, with even the tiger appearing bewildered. Mina approaches the girl to inquire about the kaiju she encountered. However, the girl trembles in fear, so the soldier assures her that she will eradicate all the kaiju. This reassures the girl, but she pleads with Mina not to harm the good kaiju who saved her mother. This revelation leaves Mina utterly bewildered, rendering her speechless. Three months later, a news broadcast displays a drawing based on eyewitness testimony of a kaiju named Number 8, which piques the Defense Force's keen interest as they continue their nationwide search for it. Kafka's co-workers watch the broadcast, while Ikikawa, aware of the situation, stands in the background. He recalls receiving a letter addressed to him and Kafka, with instructions to deliver Kafka since he left early for work. The letters contain the results of the exam they took, revealing that Kafka used to participate in it annually. Ikikawa opens his letter and finds that he passed the first round. He takes Kafka's letter with him, but curiosity gets the better of him, and he opens it on the way, discovering that Kafka also passed. The crew looks on happily, knowing Kafka has another chance to pursue his dream, though it's his last opportunity, as he won't be able to enter again after this. Ikikawa arrives and shares news with his master, but when Kafka turns around in his monster form, his student drop kicks him out of anger for exposing himself. He's especially upset because Kafka appeared on the news, prompting Ikikawa to caution him to be more careful and conceal his transformation, as they successfully did at the hospital. Reviewing his results, Kafka isn't as excited because he consistently fails the second round of exams. 
Passing the first round isn't anything new to him. Concerned for the next stage, which will have officials present, Ikakawa warns Kafka of the risk of being killed if he transforms. Despite the danger, Kafka is willing to take the risk, having tirelessly searched for a way to revert to normal without success, especially now that he's 32 and unlikely to get another chance. Ikakawa reluctantly agrees to support his teacher's decision, but warns Kafka that if anything goes wrong, he'll leave him behind and continue the program alone. He suggests they proceed as rivals. However, when Kafka struggles to open his water bottle, he involuntarily transforms again, prompting Ikakawa to advise him to skip the exam. Despite Kafka's assurance that he'll have it under control, Ikakawa insists he gets a grip and then walks away. On the day of the second round, the duo arrives at the Defense Forces base in Takakawa, completely awed by its grandeur. Ikikawa observes that the base they've arrived at is larger than the one they visited on a field trip, prompting Kafka to explain that Takakawa's base is shared with a self-defense forces garrison, enabling quick deployment of forces across western Tokyo, when needed. As other candidates start arriving, one of them takes issue with where Kafka has parked. She demands Kafka, whom she mockingly calls an old man, to move his car so she can park there, despite ample space elsewhere. Kafka takes offense and threatens to teach her a lesson. But the girl reveals a suit granting her super strength, allowing her to lift and toss the company car. Ikikawa is curious about her identity. She introduces herself as Kikoru Shinomiya, whose hobby is hunting down kaiju. While Iwa seems to recognize the last name, Kikoru's attention is solely on Kafka, telling him he smells like a kaiju after sniffing him with her powerful nose. This bring an end to our episode. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to like, share and subscribe.